So the Paris venue of Panorama is specific because of the installation, which is quite different from London and Berlin, and also the list of work. Here in Paris, we have decided to mix a chronological presentation with a thematic presentation. I decided to stress the difference and the tension between abstraction and figuration. So we start with the, the 60s in a classical way and then very quickly the presentation becomes thematical with rooms completely abstract and room with only photo paintings. This second room is about Richter's relation to art history and in particular some artists which were really important for him. One of them is Marcel Duchamp. Behind me is a very important painting in the work of Gert Richter who is a clin d'oeil to an important work of Marcel Duchamp, Nude descendant l'escalier, Nude descending a staircase. Here it's Emma descending the staircase. Emma is the first wife of Gert Richter and it's one of the first occurrence of his relation to the work of Marcel Duchamp. Another one being the four panes of glass, which are also in that second room of the show. In the third room, we try to bring together different ways in which Gert Richter is moving from photo painting to abstraction. One of these is the color chart series, a very important series in his work. It looks like geometrical painting, but it's really in a way ready-made, looking like the kind of thing you find in, a, in a, what we call marchand de couleurs in France, um, where you can choose different colors from a wide range of them. Uh, that kind of work is, has been made not only by the artist, but also by a team of assistant. And some of them were made through mathematical rules or some of them by chance. So it's really an interesting way of creating a painting, not by personal will or any uh, kind of process, but really by some kind of mixture of chance and outside rules. I also wanted to stress the diversity of the abstractions, in plural, the difference between the abstraction in the 60s, which can be quite gestural or very monochromatic, then the abstraction in the 80s, um, very violent and very free, and then the abstraction in the 90s with the use of the squeegee, which is completely specific to Gerhard Richter. This painting is part of a very important series where Gerhard Richter really goes from photo painting to abstraction. I think it explains very well the tension between these two visual worlds. Here it's, it looks like an abstract painting, but when you move backwards, you realize that it's really, it could be the picture of something. It's a detail of a palette that he has taken a photo of, his own palette. Then he blows up that detail, projects it on a wall, and paints it very carefully. So it turns out to be an abstract painting that is a photo of an abstract painting. So that's a very interesting shift in his work in the early 70s. That's where he starts a new body of work, a new body of abstract work. And that's also for me a very good way to understand how he thinks about painting and how he uses the photographic device of the blow up to create a new kind of abstraction. In that painting, you understand that blowing up a part of a photo can, can create an abstract image. He's going to use that blow-up technique also in the 80s 
blowing up little abstract, uh, little details of an abstract painting, like brush strokes, like veils of painting, like abstract shapes floating on paintings. He's blowing up all these abstract shapes to create this free abstract. Glenn is a really interesting painting of the early 80s, quite um, characteristic of that period with the use of very bright colors, yellow, green, red and blue, the primary colors. But it's also interesting in terms of composition. In that case, um, the early 80s are called free abstract. It probably means that the abstraction is freed from photography. But the truth is there are so, still some echoes of the photographic, photographical technique in that kind of painting. For example, here in Glen, the, the background, the blue and red background, blue uh, background and red dots, is really a blow up of a, what would be um, a red stroke on the blue background. For example, that detail here, if you blow it up, it becomes the background of the painting. So the truth is, these abstractions are not completely freed from photography. They still have a photographical uh, composition in spirit. The idea of the change of scale and the transformation of one object, which becomes really big and becomes completely abstract. And we can see that also in the big stroke that is presented also in a central position in the Paris venue. You can see in stroke the very big, the giant abstract painting that we put in the center of the show. The same use of the blowing up technique, where Gert Richter has photographed a 50 centimeters painting, blowing it up to 20 meter painting, and creating a painting that is really between abstraction and figuration, in the sense that when you see it from a long distance, you see that it's a stroke, and when you get very close to it, it's really an abstract surface. That importance of the glass and the mirror in Gerhard Richter's work is really, I think, uh, put forward in Paris show because we devoted a central room to it in the shape of a triangle. And in that central room are assembled glass works, grey under glass, mirrors, but also grey monochromes as a central reflection on that question of mirror and vision on painting. But that's also um, a souvenir of the first show of Gerhard Richter in Paris in 1977, the year of the opening of Centre Pompidou. That show was a very radical show at the time because Gerhard Richter showed only mono monochromatic grey painting, the first uh, four panes of glass, the first these very early glass pieces, also color fabs and a few uh, landscapes. But uh, as a whole, it was a very radical show and perceived as such. This use of glass is really, for me, a reflection on painting and of the vision of painting, how, you, how one sees painting, how one sees the world through painting, because a glass obviously is transparent, but it's also a mirror where you can see yourself, as well as the, what is standing behind you or around you. So any glass can turn into a mirror and any mirror can turn into a self-portrait of the person standing in front of it. The piece I'm standing in front of is a big mirror that he invented in a way in 1981 when he was invited to show with Gerd Baslitz and decided instead of showing paintings to show these big mirrors in front of Gerd Baslitz's painting. So the best thing to say about grey is probably to read uh, Richter's quote. Grey is a color, and sometimes, to me, the most important of all. Grey was absent of opinion, nothing, neither, nor. It was also a means of manifesting my own relationship with apparent reality. I didn't want to say it is thus and not otherwise. So that room is putting together different types of greys, uh, either from the 60s or very recent works, in different techniques, either paintings or glass, of painting under glass. And you can see here the very big diversity of these works using the same color gray.
This is one of the thematic rooms in the show, and I chose the motif of landscape because it's one of the classical genres of paintings like portraits or vanities. And Richter is very interested in these because of the depth of history in them. And also because he can place with the motif in many different ways. The one common point of all these paintings is that none of them depicts people. It's always void of, of anybody, of any living presence. Uh, but then they can be very different from one to another. This one, Chinon, behind me, is a very large one in our collection. And in, it's interesting because of the shadow on the left part of the painting. Uh, it's not rain, it's not really a cloud, it's not um, anything natural. It's really the photography, which was a little under light. We say sous-exposé in French. And he just painted that exactly as it was on the photo. And that's why the painting looks so strange in a way, uh, because it's both photography and painting. Sabine with Child is a series of eight portraits that I decided to show in Paris only. I first saw it in London in a portrait show of Gerhard Richter, and I was really struck by that series that I found really moving and interesting. The series is now in a room, a new thematic room, about the portrait in general, and it's a portrait of Gerhard Richter's third wife, Sabine. It's not only a very intimate and personal subject, but it also refers to religious painting, of course, the Virgin Mary and the child. So this tension between classical painting and personal history, I think, is really revealing of Gert Richter's work. But there's also the usual tension between abstraction and configuration, because in some of these portraits, one can see very clearly the subjects, the photo, and in other paintings, uh, the surface is quite abstract and the subject becomes hidden. And once again, I think it's, that's a very good example of the distinction between abstraction and figuration in his work. The other aspect that makes this series really unique is that usually Gerhard Richter uses a series for abstract painting. For example, the Gage painting is a series of abstract painting. In that case, it's a photo painting that is treated as a series and the subject is a portrait. And that is very unique in Gerhard Richter's work. This painting is called Chapelle Royale, Dresden, called Chapelle Dresden. It's one of the rare self-portraits of Gerd Richter, and it's actually uh, him and his very good friend Benjamin Bouclot, who's also an important art critic and art historian, who wrote extensively about Richter's work. But it's also interesting that they're both standing in Dresden, um, which is the native city of Gerd Richter that he left in 1961 and only returned to in 1989, so really late in his life. So it's also sort of a short biography of Gerhardt in one painting. Aladdin is also very specific to Paris venue. It's interesting because it's the latest series of work done with glass. It's actually painting under glass, as were the gray under glass in the, the other room in the show. In that case, it's a very colorful work done with enamel under glass. And it's interesting for me because it looks like photography in many ways, because the color is dropped on a pane of glass and then suddenly stopped by pressing another pane. And it's really um, also a moment in time so it's once again a mixture of painting and photography. Trip is the latest series in Richter's work and we're really proud and happy to show it in Paris because it's the first time it's been shown in a museum after Galerie Marianne Goodman. 
It's very interesting because it shows once again how Richter uh, develops a new technology or absorbs a new technology into painting or turns a new technology into painting. In that case, it's printing on paper, ink on paper, through a digital print, and it's really from a photography of a detail of a painting from the 90s that he uh, worked on through digital computer. He simplified it and he made a book about it, a book that is called Motif and that we published in Paris. And in that book, you can see very clearly how he comes from, he starts with a pain, this uh, painting, this photography of a painting, and really changes it, transforms it one page after another until it gets to this very simple motif of a line. And then he decides to print these, a few of these lines in a very monumental format. And it becomes, again, a painting or a new kind of painting. And that painting comes from another painting through photography and digital work. So it's really interesting in terms of the dialogue between painting, photography, and digital image.